What is up guys? Today we're going to be restoring two pre-1915 Coca-Cola bottles. One of them's a little bit earlier than the other, probably right around 1902 or 1903. What's crazy is both these bottles may have contained trace amounts of cocaine at one point in time as that was a common ingredient back then. Both are pretty nasty as we found these in the water. They had algae and dirt and gravel and snails and all kinds of fun stuff on them. So we're going to take our time and we're going to try to restore these things and make them look back like they did over 100 years ago. So let's get to it. All right guys, these right here are the last two straight side cokes that I found in creeks into different creeks. You can see the one on the right over here is a little more baked on there because it sat in the sun for a longer period of time. This one over here must have had a little bit faster moving water so it's not quite as bad. However, they're both still loaded with gravel and sand on the inside and I've had a ton of people ask me, how in the world do you restore these bottles and bring them back to such a shiny condition? So I'm going to break this down a little bit further than I ever have in the past. Uh, go over some stuff that's maybe elementary to some of you some of you it may not the very first thing that we're going to do is we're either going to use this screwdriver right here or i have an old car antenna that i keep laying around too to reach inside of the necks of these bottles and try to get all that gravel and sand out then starts the more interesting part of it which is going to be the muriatic acid that's inside of this bucket you can see this nice little pile of gravel right here that's what was inside of these coke bottles but as I just said, that staining is going to be the problem. So we've got the dirt removed. And the next step that I usually take is I'm gonna take both of these bottles and drop them into this acid that's inside of this bucket right here. So Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, everybody sells this acid and it's called muriatic acid. And this stuff right here is strong. It's what they use to etch concrete. You do not want to put your hands in here without rubber gloves on and you do not want to inhale the smoke or the steam that you'll see come off of it if they're incredibly dirty. I'm not sure if these two are gonna do that or not, but I have had some bottles do that in the past. Also, something that's kind of important to mention is this acid right here has been inside of this five gallon bucket for around three weeks uh, without being sealed. So it's not quite as potent as one that you just bought off the store shelf and opened up. So it still works, but it's not quite as strong. I would recommend keeping a lid on it, obviously keeping away from animals, kids, and all of that kind of stuff. But this stuff is reusable and I try to dip as many bottles in there as I can. It costs around 14 to $18 a gallon, something like that, it's not too bad. So without any further ado, let's drop these things in here. You're gonna wanna let it sink down. I may have to put on my rubber gloves and push it down just a little bit, or I can just do it with a screwdriver maybe. There we go. Make sure it's nice and full. There we go. Now then, we're gonna do the same. Look how nasty that is. Look at the bottom of it. I really want y'all to notate how much this acid does to the bottle. Cause I've had a lot of people asking me about it. Gonna do the same thing with that one. Gonna hold it down. Make sure it gets the air out of it. There we go. As you can see, the acid is directly over top of both of these bottles. However, there will be air pockets inside of them. It'll be important to kind of roll these around. I'm gonna let them sit in there for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, not forever. And then we'll come back, take them out, give them a quick rinse off before moving to the next step. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, something like that. We're gonna take it out. You can see that it's still got it all on the inside. Then I dump it out and then I'm gonna give it a shake like this right here. And this stuff does build pressure. So watch your eyes, when you let off your thumb, you'll hear it, you'll see it start to foam up. And like I said, I just wanna be sure that that acid's hitting everywhere on the inside of that bottle. So let's go ahead and set that one back down. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. You can already see that stuff starting to melt away. Now then we're gonna do a quick shake. Sorry for the shaky camera. And there's a ladybug that came to see me. You need to get away from this acid, ladybug. All right, we gave that one a quick shake. You can see it still has some buildup right there. We're gonna set that one back down in there. Let them soak a little bit more now that I've let the acid move around. All right, I've already got the water running. I'm gonna grab both these out of here. And we're gonna set them right here to the side after I dump the acid out. I don't wanna get that on the ground. Probably kill a big spot in the grass. <laughs> Look, see that? I just wiped it and it literally just came off as I wiped it with my fingers. So that's definitely gonna clean these up except for the scratching. And we're gonna do something different about the scratching. So remember how bad and dirty that bottom of that one was? Look how nice and clean it is now. All right, I'm gonna give them a quick rinse real quick, show you what it looks like after the acid bath. Now, I just did a really quick acid bath. I did not run a brush over these. I didn't do anything like that. 
I just used it to dip them in there and get that original residue off from the creek. Now that that's off, I'm gonna to move to the next step. And this may be a step that most of you may not be able to do because you may not have a bottle tumbler, but that's what's gonna take all of that fine scratching that you see off or most of it and make it where they look brand new again. So this is an important step to make a bottle like these that are well over 110 years old uh, look like new. And you know, it costs a lot of money. It's a very time consuming process. However, I think it's worth it, especially when you're talking about history like these Coca-Cola bottles. Uh, these two bottles right here though do have a lot of rash but that's just typical from something coming out of the creek so i'm excited to show you how these things turn out and what they look like when they're done all right guys i'm not going to show you all my new tumbler that i'm developing i'm actually running these two on my old tumbler because i'm trying to keep it top secret so we get all the patents worked out but these two bottles have been spinning for right at seven days with 1200 grit inside of there at a really low rpm the bottles are centered in here with about a half a cup of water mixed with 1200 grit silicon carbide. And what that does is that cuts the glass and it removes a very, very small glass layer from the exterior to remove scratches and to bring these bottles back to a shine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this off, pull these out, drop them back in the acid bath, and I'm gonna let y'all take a look at them. All right, both of the tubes are off the tumblers. You can look and see that nasty black looking stuff. That's part of that silicon carbide that I was telling y'all about mixed with the water as well as some of the nastiness off of the glass. So right now, it doesn't look very impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and dump them out, try to get all of my copper pieces off real quick with the garden hose that I have stretched out behind me. Then we're gonna dunk them right back in the bucket of acid that we used last time to get the majority of this black stuff off and then I'll show you all the finished product. You can already tell they're gonna look pretty awesome. They look really good into the acid they go. That's just to clean any of the residual black foam that you see there off of them because there will be some trapped in like open air bu bubbles and sometimes into the deeper scratches. So that's why I like to soak them in this muriatic acid afterwards. It's just to eat away any of the black stuff that may be left over. All right, here we go. Let's see how this first one looks. First one I pulled out is going to be that aqua. Coca-Cola from Birmingham that we found. Let's give it a quick rinse over here before we do a final wash in the sink. We just wanna get this thing where it doesn't have any of that acid obviously left on it before we go inside and wash it off the rest of the way. We're also going to inspect to see if we see any more black stuff that the acid didn't get off. Here comes that clear one that we found. This is def definitely a labor of love, guys. This one looks like it turned out pretty good too. Let's do a real quick rinse. Stand it up. Well, drop the hose on it and break it after all that work. I may cry just a little bit. <laughs> Only joking. Fill the inside up with water on both of these. And then I can take my gloves off, which is where I can really tell what we've got left to do to these. All right, after a little bit more inspection, you can see there's a little bit of black right there in the lip. Uh, this one right here has got the same thing. As far as the heel goes, it looks pretty good. There's that nice big open air bubble I was telling you about. There's a little bit of black in there. I may not be able to do anything about that. Let's see, this one over here. Looks like it's gonna turn out pretty good too. So for that spot that you see in the lip, I have this little brush right here. You can buy these things on Amazon for really, really cheap. Uh, this is bronze and it's a little bit softer than the glass. And what I'll do is I'll keep it a little bit wet and I'll just kind of run this around the lip right here on both sides to knock the remainder of that black off. And here we go. This is going to be a complete product. You can see how much better the glass looks. It no longer looks sick or super scratched. And to be a pre-1915 Coke bottle, this Aqua one has turned out really, really nice. I'm very excited about it. It does have a little bit of residue left up here that I can focus on a little bit more, but that's not too bad. This clear one is actually older than that Aqua one. This is probably gonna be about 1910. This one over here could be as early as 1902. So let's take a look at that one. Maybe I can hold it up to the sun for y'all to see how much better it looks. It's crazy. You can see how clear it is, how the, gla the glass is not scratched. 
That's because of the layers that were removed during the tumble process. Absolutely beautiful early piece of Coca-Cola history. And it's kind of interesting to think this may have even had cocaine in it at one point. If y'all enjoyed this video and this tutorial, please be sure that you're subscribed because we do this kind of stuff all the time. I do have a video that has the tumbling process broke down a little bit more. I'll be sure to put that right here at the end on the end screen so y'all can click through and watch it. But if you love antique glass, this is the only way that I've found to be successful in bringing them back to their former glory.